What's going on guys, Dr. Root 7 signing in back with another tutorial. It's 4 a.m. and I cannot sleep, so let's get on with some tutorials, shall we? This is going to be about emulation retroarch for the PlayStation Vita. So let's start by connecting the PlayStation Vita onto our PC. Microsoft Edge, get the fuck out of my shit. So we're going to do a couple of stuffs. I already downloaded the necessary stuff. So I'm just going to let you guys know very quickly. Go into the link in the description. Go to RetroArch's website. Go into downloads. And then just scroll down. And what is going on with this? That's man. Anyways, moving on to the installation. PlayStation Vita. Download latest version of the RetroArch VPK and download data. After downloading those, follow through these steps. We're going to copy the downloaded RetroArch VPK. You can copy it onto the base of your memory card or if you have a dedicated folder where you store your VPKs like I do, you can do that. Also, you're going to extract the rare file RetroArch data that we just downloaded. Go into data folder of your memory card, extract it here inside the data folder. Okay, so we are not quite done with the PC yet. After copying the folder and the file, we're just going to disconnect our PlayStation Vita and install RetroArch. Let's go through with the installation process. Okay, so while this is installing, let me show you three games out of my collection. Yeah, I don't quite open my games. Now this, man, this was a hassle to acquire because it was always running out of stock and I was late to the party. Project Sense, I backed this project up as a Kickstarter. So I got this game along with some other stuffs. God damn it this internet connection and shakedown hawaii it's an amazing game it's from the same company v blank entertainment so yeah shakedown hawaii is the sequel to retro city rampage it's a fucking awesome game um, i played this on the switch amazing titles project sense if you like nice visuals with some horror elements in it definitely check this out Make sure that you have a fast enough internet connection. My Wi-Fi is acting weird. It's a very odd hour. We are done with the installation. Exit Vita Shell, and you're going to see RetroArch. We're just going to run RetroArch once. Okay, we do not need to do anything. We're just going to exit out of RetroArch, and we're going to reconnect our PlayStation Vita to the PC. After connecting our PlayStation Vita, go into the data folder, go into RetroArch, and here you're going to see a bunch of folders. Now this is why we ran RetroArch for the first time. So we're going to go into system and this is where we are going to transfer our BIOS files. After transferring the BIOS files, we're going to transfer the ROM files. Go into the root of your memory card. Somewhere on your PC, create a folder named ROMs and create subfolders inside that ROM folder depending on the system. For now, I have Game Boy Advance, Genesis, and SNES. Go ahead and transfer the ROMs. So I'm going to show you guys the next steps on the PS Vita. So we're going to go into settings and first change the appearance of the menu. User interface under settings, go into menu, and here we're going to change it to XMB. Save the configuration. In order to do that, go into main menu, go into configuration file, save current configuration now it's completely based on your preference however i think xmb is the best look for retroarch just go ahead and restart retroarch when you're going to do any kind of system-wide change you're going to always save the configuration the user interface has changed however i do not like the color so let's just go ahead and change the color so we're going to go into settings configuration menu color theme and we're going to go and change it additionally if you want to change background image you can do that by going into user interface appearance background image under background image you have to go into the specific folder you can create a new folder where you can save your own downloaded background image files i just kept it under the xmb menu the menus are a bit off, so we're going to go ahead and change that and bring it within the frames. We're going to go into settings and user interface again, appearance, 
and select the first option menu scale factor now it depends on your preference i like to keep it in between 1.20 to 1.25 we're going to go ahead and scan the directory go into uxo and look for the roms folder and then just select scan directory this is going to take a little bit of time depending on the number of roms you have so if you have a lot of roms so it's going to take a while okay so once the scan directory has been completed you're going to see all these roms showing up under each specific system now i'm going to add in the thumbnails for each of these roms you're gonna get to see cover pictures of each of these games along with the gameplay thumbnails head over to main menu online updater enable this on-demand thumbnail downloads now this is going to take a little bit of time depending on the number of roms that you have so the system might get laggy so do not worry that's only going to happen the first time we have the thumbnails of each of these games now that looks pretty awesome in my opinion so now we're going to go over to settings head over to input and then we're going to go over to hotkeys you're going to get all of these options the hotkeys here we're going to first enable the hotkey enable so here you get a bunch of stuffs and if you want to rewind i love this feature i'm just going to assign that time for me to show you guys how to configure each one of these emulated consoles in order to get the best performance and visuals so i'm going to start with nes but before we move on to that head over to settings select directory over to video filters and then uxo data head over to retroarch and select filters and select use this directory go into configuration file save current configuration let's run the first core which is the nes core Mega Man 6 i'm just going to pull up the retroarch menu head over to settings video and we're going to turn on bilinear filtering it's already turned on for me i'm going to just turn it off now the screen is going to go black it's fine just press any button once or twice and it's going to turn back on we're going to go into video filter and here we have a bunch of filters so for the nes we're going to select normal 2x filter this setting is going to make your visuals look better any kind of screen tearing or any kind of graphic anomalies or the flickering of the hud it's going to go away and the next one that we're going to play and configure is the snes core let's start with alien wars for this one we're going to select snes 9x 2005 plus okay we're going to pull up the option head over to settings go to video enable bilinear filtering for the video filter keep it to normal 2x now for most of these the normal 2x works really fine the emulation will be locked to steady frame rate as you can see the game runs very smooth on this core for those who are looking to play Star Fox, well unfortunately you're going to have to use a separate emulator so another thing guys remember we have assigned the rewind feature the rewind hotkey in order for that to be used you need to enable that feature however it's going to cost you the performance but not for all the course you can see the performance has decreased so use this feature at your own discretion so if you want to activate the rewind feature retroarch settings game settings you can just toggle the rewind support on and off so now we're going to move on to game boy so for game boy we're going to select game bat as core bring up the retroarch menu head over to core options select core colorization set it to internal go into internal palette you're going to see a lot of these palettes now select the ones according to your preference i'm going to select the one that i like well this is an unlicensed game so i don't even know if this this ever existed now let's try the rewind feature of this core bring up the menu go to rewind and enable it if you want to change the color you can just tap left shoulder button and let's just try out the rewind feature there you go the rewind feature is working really well make sure that you assign the change palette to another key otherwise it's just going to mess up whole color palette that you are going to assign head over to game boy color I'm going to select the game bat core for this as well quick menu head over to settings video bilinear filtering on and for this as well we're going to keep the filter settings to normal 2x
Okay, so now as you can see that the game looks pretty, pretty vibrant and beautiful. However, I don't think I have selected the proper region. We can't do anything about that. Let's try the rewind feature on this one. I don't think it's going to affect performance that much on this core because this one is not like the SNES. Let's move over to the Game Boy Advance core. Okay, for Game Boy Advance, we're going to select GPSP core. Pull up the quick menu, head over to video, and for this as well, we're going to keep the bilinear filtering on. Video filter set it to normal 2x, go to scaling, and we're just going to keep it to core provided. So as you can see that the game looks pretty crisp and awesome. Let's try to see how the rewind feature works. Yeah, it works pretty awesome. So I guess only for the SNES, the rewind feature costs you performance. So now we're going to head over to Sega. Let's start with Game Gear. So for Game Gear, we're going to select Genesis Plus GX Wide Core. For Game Gear, we're going to keep the bilinear filtering on and screen filtering to 2x. I don't even know why Spider-Man is not hitting this guy. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, we're going to move over to the next core. Let's head over to Master System, the same core, Genesis Plus GX Wide. Nothing additional to show other than the rewind feature. We're going to keep the same video settings. The game looks pretty vibrant and also it's running pretty smooth. And the rewind feature is not costing performance. Time to move on to Genesis. Same core, Genesis Plus, GX Wide and the same graphics options. Let's turn on the rewind feature and see how it affects performance. So for the Genesis as well, I can see that it's costing performance. So let's just turn off the rewind feature. There you go. The game runs perfectly fine. I guess for the Sega Genesis, the 16-bit games, the enabling the rewind feature is going to cost performance. Time for Sega CD. For Sega CD, we're going to select Pico Drive as core. And we're going to keep the same video settings by linear filtering on and video filter to normal 2x. Let's just try to see how the rewind feature works. So the rewind feature also is slowing down the performance. Let's just turn it off. So the rewind feature is going to cost you performance for the Sega CD games as well. All right, time to move on to the final core. It's the arcade core. So for the arcade core, we're going to use the FB Alpha 2012 core. Okay, as you can see that the game is running pretty choppy so we're going to go ahead and pull up the retro arc settings go into video for this we're going to turn off the bilinear filtering and also for video filter we're going to have no filters okay so there we go as you can see that with those settings the game is running perfectly fine additionally the rewind function is not hampering the performance of the game as well i guess only for some of the cores the rewind function hampers the performance. To narrow it down, it affects the SNES core, the Sega CD, the Sega Genesis core. The other core seems to be working pretty awesome with the rewind function enabled. That was it with all the core configuration along with installation and setting up of RetroArch. If you have found this tutorial useful, please make sure to drop in a like and subscribe. I've put in a lot of effort and work and hours to bring you guys an extended and extensive tutorial about the RetroArch on the PlayStation Vita. Yeah, I'm gonna see you guys on the next one. Dr. Root 7, signing off. Peace.